Welcome back to my van build. The plan of action for this video is to get as much of this, of this electrical equipment buttoned up as possible, with the exception of a few 12 volt supplies, probably being the Truma heater and one or two other things. Now, we're gonna start the video with getting my two 40 volt mains all sorted out and getting my two 40 volt sockets rigged up and working, because that'll be awesome. And then I'll get my um, lighting done and we'll see what happens from there. Two forty uh, rigged up and working. We'll um, we'll have a quick talk through. I haven't actually got the um, the mains hookup lead made up yet, so I haven't got actually the fuse wheel running. But I've got the inverter rigged up and got the changeover switch rigged up, so the sockets are actually on through the inverter. So we'll run through that quickly. Okay. So as I said earlier, I haven't got any of this running yet, but I can talk you through how I've wired it. So there's a four mil three core coming up from my mains hookup on the side of the van. That then comes up into the top of this 40 amp, 30 milliamp RCD, which will just protect the system from any fault currents or any, any faults or shorts on the system. And then it goes through my buzz bar, and then it supplies my three 16 amp circuit breakers. Now, as I mentioned before, one supplies my socket down here, which will supply my charger. The other one uh, supplies my changeover switch, which will put on zero for now. And we'll come to in a second. And the third one will be the 240 volt supply to my Truma Combi 4E boiler. Uh, we'll install that in a whole different video later on. Now, what I've also done in here is I've ran a six mil earth down from the main earth block down to the body of the van here. Now, I've also put another link here just to earth the, the casing of my solar charge controller, just for extra protection. So that, basically the van is one big cable containment and there's cables ran all well on the bodywork of the van before the spray installation went in. So if any of those fail or short, the last thing we want is the body of the van becoming energized and we look like Neil here. You mean to say this could happen? So that's why that's there for. There'll be another one go in from the negative side of the block here. It'll go along and then it'll earth to the body of the van up here. I've done it on two separate points because I didn't want to run any cables where the door catches because the last thing you want is that catch catching any of the cables. So that is that. Um, now, yeah, that goes up to my changeover switch. So zero is off. One, if, it, if it's on number one, that'll be supplying my 240 volt sockets through my 240 volt mains hookup setup here. If it's on zero, then the sockets are isolated. So this cable here goes off to my sockets in the van, my 240 volt sockets in the van. And then if it's on number two, that'll be on this supply here from my inverter. So at the moment, my sockets are being supplied from the inverter. So I've wired my inverter, I've rigged off these two positive negative blocks and this massively overkill cable, but it's all I had left, so it's been wired in 50 mil. That then goes down to the main connections, so the 12 volt connections on the inverter on the back here. So there's 12 volts sitting there at the moment. And then gives an output of 240 volts or 230 volts at the minute, which as you can see, and then it supplies this socket, which is then plugged in and goes up to my changeover switch. So now, being on number two, my sockets in the van are being supplied via this inverter. I can show you quickly, looking at this uh, socket just up here. As you can see, as you can see, we have power. So all good. I think next I'm gonna get this lighting control box wired. I'm gonna run these in some Copex, much like this. So I've already ran my switch cables through here, through the Copex, just to keep it all tidy, and then into this box. And then I'll run these switch wires in a bit of Copex. Uh, down into here and then we'll get it rigged up. So I'll get it rigged up and then again we'll talk through how I've done it. In other news, my light switch has arrived so we can get all the lights working today which will be awesome. Now I've got that light switch from Beacon Lights amongst a load of other stuff for this van build. So 
if you are, I'll put a link to their website in the description below. So check them out if you want anything like lighting, switches, any 240 volt bits and pieces, anything like that, then give them a shout, they're brilliant. Thanks guys for uh, supplying my bits and pieces. Right, let's get these lights wired, shall we? fan wired and I've got all the lights wired in. So I was gonna have a chat through as I was doing it about how I'm doing it, but then I thought I'll probably confuse the living daylights out of you, if not myself trying to do that. So I've got it all done and I'm gonna try and talk through how it's all wired. If there's any electricians watching this, then uh, if you can just fast forward a few minutes, that'd be great because I don't wanna embarrass myself as much as anyone else trying to explain how two-way lighting works in layman's terms. Um, but we'll have a go, shall we? So I'll flip the camera around. Okay, so I'll talk you through how I've wired my system up. We'll start off with this little 12 volt distribution board or fuse panel. At the minute, there's five fuses connected. I've got the front cover here. I need to get some proper labels made up. But I've just put some white tape on there and mic them up at the minute. So the first fuse is the fuse for the under cupboard lights. So I've segregated them all just to make it nice and easy. So if one fails or if anything fails, I can see exactly which one it is and narrow the fault down and just for better protection really. So the second one is all the spotlights. There's two rows of spotlights, but one's a kitchen end, one's a bed end, and they're both on separate switches, but I've put them all on one fuse, which is fine. Next one, it says bar on here, but that's the big spotlight bar out the top of the sliding door. Then there's a another fuse for the fan, and then these ones is for the two wall lights, the spotlights above the bed. The wall lights, they just come off here, they're doubled up because there's two separate cables, there's an individual cable lock to each light. That then comes through here and then literally goes through the box straight up to the two spotlights and they work a treat. So they're all on and running, I can quickly show you. Lovely, can't reach that one so I won't show you that. Moving up on my list, we have the fan. The fan is exactly the same. It just literally wires straight through here, all the way through straight onto the five amp fuses. And they're all five amp fuses because the smallest, I could have got away with two, two and a half, three amp fuses, but it was the smallest in the pack that I bought and they're absolutely fine. So we'll get to the fan in a bit, I'll show you that working. Then we have the top three, the LED bar, the spotlights and the under cupboard lights are on these three fuses. Now what they do, they actually come through here and then through on this seven core flex. So that's basically trailer flex. Through here, they go up to the switch. So they are what we'll call the permanent lives or the lives. I've actually written all down this piece of cardboard so I can remember them. Those three colors are all feeds. They go up to the switch into the top of the switch and then you flip the switch on and then that takes a switch live back down from the switch down through these other cores there should be four of them which there is and then they remember i said before that i've brought all my switch lives so what i mean by switch lives is the cores from the lighting circuits they come straight from the lights down to the junction box because as i said before i didn't know how I was going to lay the van out and where I was going to put the switches at the time of installing the cable. So I, I brought them all down to a common space, which has actually worked really well. So all as you can see, the switch live comes back from the switch. It's through crimped, straight onto the live up to the lights, the core up to the lights. This is a bit naughty, but I've just crimped all the uh, negatives together. I wanted to segregate it all, but I just got a bit carried away. So I'm fine, I'm happy with that. It's not the best practice. You're better off splitting them all up and keeping them all individual, but fine whatever so yeah that's that's the crux of it really there's a, a permanent live so three different circuits going up there's four back because i've got the the spotlights on one fuse that's why there's three up and four down so that's how i've kind of wired that let's go over to the switch this is where it's going to get interesting hey dog okay right this is where it's going to get interesting so i've two-wayed all these lights so except for this bar then what that means is there's a switch here, a bit like you're landing at home. There's a switch at the bottom of the stairs and a switch at the top of the stairs. So there's a switch here by the, the main sliding door. And then there's another switch over here 
by the bed. And then obviously these are on independently, like I said before. So while, yeah, while I'm here, I'll just show you this fan. So this is all wired and working a treat. It goes two ways, sucks and blows. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so back to switching. How do I explain this? So my seven core, my lives and my switch lives in that seven core all just come to this switch. So the the LED bar is not two way, that's on one switch. So you can just see a live in from a little fuse board, then a switch live out. So out of out, it's only an L, it's an L1, sorry, and common. So common's it. Bleh. So my permanent live is in the common and the switch live back is in L1. So if I switch this on, let me do it. There she is. Oh, let me try to get this to work with one hand. Oh yeah. Oh, it's lovely. Okay, so that works. That was difficult on your own. Next, we have the next switch, which is on the cupboard lights. Lovely. So what I've done here is I've brought the switch live. Sorry, that's a lie. I've brought the permanent live from the fuse box down and that goes into L1 and then the switch live. So the switch live back to that terminal box that then turns the lights on is in L2, right? So the rest of the switches are all exactly the same. So what, what I've done is I've then taken a cable or a, a wire, if you like, from L1 on this switch to L1 on this switch up here. Exactly the same with L2. There's a core linked from L2 over to L2 of this switch. And I'll take, I've taken what's known as a common, basically just a link from the common part of the switch. As you can see on the lower part, it's called common. And it's basically a link from there to the common of the corresponding switch. I can go into a lot more detail, but that's how I've wired it. So what that means is I'll flick, flick one switch on. Let's do it with one of these actually, so it's a bit easier. So that switches from there. And it also, it also switches from here, as you can see. Now that rule applies to each one of these. So the, the, the supply from the fuse board is in L1, the switch live back to that terminal box, switching the lights on is in L2. And there's basically cables connecting L1, L2 and common. So three different cores from that switch to the corresponding switch. There's two or three different ways of doing two-way switching, but that's how I've done it. There's, a couple, there's an easier way, but I'll just talk you through how I've done it. Um, the only one that's a little bit different is these two, the first two, or the two on the left, which do my two spotlights, my bed and my kitchen. Um, I've just linked the lives, because as I said, they're on one fuse. Okay, so that, in really bad explanation terms, is how I've wired my lights. Now, I hope I didn't confuse the living daylights out of you too much, but it works and it's cool. Right, next job on the list, I'm gonna pull some cables in for my fridge. I'll get my fridge up and maybe my cooker, get the cable there for the cooker and my USB sockets. That's a uh, next plan. I'm also gonna get my Truma combi boiler um, laid in position so I know where it's going and then I'll get the cables for that. So I'll quickly bosh them in again. I'll, I'll just do it and then we'll talk through it once I've done it. So I hope it's, uh, I hope it's not going too badly and <laughs> you can understand my dodgy explanations, but it's going well. We've got power on. This is really exciting. We've got power on. So cool. Let's, uh, let's carry on doing some fun electrics.
did that thing again, didn't I? Where I just got completely carried away with wiring it. I uh, I didn't do any fancy fancy filming. I ran a few time lapses, but I don't even know what they're on. So I hope you enjoyed it, whatever it was. I pretty much bottomed out the sort of bulk of the electrical work. So I think this will actually be the last electrical vlog. But I'll have a chat through what I've done. Um, but I can't remember. So <laughs> wish me luck. Let's go. Right, it's been a few days to be fair since I did the talking bit before the time lapses. But... Uh, the line junction box is now together. I'm not proud of this wiring, by the way. I'm really not. Honestly, I'm not proud of it. Um, I might pull it all apart at, at another time and sort of try and tidy it up, but at the minute it will do. These aren't connected yet because I've actually ran out of the uh, other crimps. Look, empty. There's one left in there. So let's get some more of those. But what have I done? Line junction box is done. I've now put this 25 mil single core earth in and I actually ran it down uh, here and then banged it onto this point so now my batteries are earth down to the body of the van what else have I done I've now put the 240 volt supply in for my Truma combi boiler so that goes up over into this this doesn't look very good so don't judge uh, goes into that copex around there around there around there down and then through the hole then it goes down to my kitchen area which we'll come to in a second also ran in there is those two so they're ran separately because i don't want to run those they're, they're like data or control cabling if they're ran with a power cable in, in direct contact they uh they could cause some interference so i don't want that so the black one running along there is the control cable for my truma combi boiler and the white one running along here literally comes down here down here and then into the bottom of my solar charge controller so basically it gives out that display on a remote controller in the van, which we'll come to. Can't remember what else I've done. I don't know what else is different. I think that is it. I ran all these. So all these are the supplies to my kitchen appliances, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. But again, I've just ran them into this Copex, bit heat shrink over the end, ran them around and then dropped them through my hole. I'll take you around and show you uh, where we're at in the van. Okay, so there's my fancy fancy true McCombie boiler. It's huge. So up here, got me light switches. Oh yeah. So this one is, as I said, my solar charge controller remote. So it gives me my battery status, gives me um, output current and voltage, and then it gives you solar charge current and solar voltage, which is great. This is the load side, which I haven't rigged up yet. So we'll work that out another day. This is my control panel for my combi boiler for that beast, but. Um, Obviously, I haven't got that reject up yet, so that's not working. And obviously, my light switches. Where else are we at? So, what I did is... Right, oh, this looks a mess in here. <laughs> all this will be boarded up. I'm going to cover all this. It just looks horrible at the moment. And we'll, uh, we'll tidy up another day. But, under here... So, that copex is there, as you can see. Down there. Um, again, not happy about all this wiring. If I'd have thought about this and had my layout planned at the beginning of the van build, all this would be hidden up. So it's not the best, but it will do. So with these, the blacks are the 12 volt my supplies and the white one is my 240 volt supply for my tree and combi boiler. They come up, the, the white 240 cable comes into this double pole switch, which will be my 240 volt output. You actually see the orange lead on the combi boiler there. We'll go into that and then that'll be on when I'm plugged into mains so the combi boiler will run on two four volt hookup. These they look like light switches but they're not they're double pole isolation switches. So the first one will be my 12 volt pump which this is the sink area by the way. So we'll go under the sink here somewhere. There's the cable it will be connected up later on obviously. The second one is my cooker ignition so if I want to isolate that and the third one is my fridge. So that's what oh, I need to get a label machine and label these up but that's that. They then go out of there down here along and then again not happy about this at the moment but for now it will do the cooker i've just put all this on these um bullet connectors yep got some more so this is my cooker ignition they'll go into there it's just so i can quickly unplug it and take it out but i might i might see if i can come up with a better idea for doing that joint but so that's that same with my fridge which is here so fridge comes to here bullet connectors again that's all plugged in I'll get it on when I get some crimps for the other end. And I also put oh, and I also put the USB point here. So they just display connections. That should be on actually at the moment. That's about the only one that's connected up. 
yeah, so that's good. I kind of just thought that would be quite a nice place being out here because if you want to sit outside, you want to plug into it, then you can. And also, it kind of you can loop around and put onto put anything on the worktop. So that's fine there. Um, what else have I done? I think that's it. So my combi boiler. This will probably be the next vlog. I think the next vlog I'm going to get that sitting, get that mounted. So that's huge. I'm trying to work out where in the van it could go. I think the best place for it to go is actually in this space. I've sat it in there and it fits in there perfectly, which is why the isolator is there. And then I can duct the, there's like a, an exhaust on it. I can duct that out of the wall side here. So maybe next vlog we'll concentrate on getting that fitted. I think that's everything covered. When I edit this video up, we'll, we'll see what I've missed, but I can't done all the electrical work now. I didn't want to go through that lot in detail because it's pretty basic. It's just a supply. So they're one mil, two core cables from that fuse box that then run straight out through that copex into that double pole switch. And then the supplies come out of those. So it's just two connections at the top, two connections at the bottom for live and neutral, or for the positive and negative. And then go out to the appliances. Now the the USB point is a direct feed. I'm not worried about that. This USB point up here is a direct feed. Uh, and that's it. So I wasn't going to go into too much detail on how to wire all that. But that concludes the electrical vlogs, I think. There's probably something I missed. Obviously, when I get the pump and do the plumber side, we'll connect that pump up. Um, when I do the boiler, we'll show the wiring diagram. We'll show the electrical connections and that later on. My worktop, you wait till you see that. That is going to be awesome. Just uh, watch this space. Done a deal with a nice lady today to uh, get that made for me. So that's going to be exciting. Also, ordered my um, cushions for the bed, for the bed, cushions for the seating area. So that's exciting. Lots is happening. I've got a little trip planned in September. So I want to be ready for that. That's the dream. But thanks, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you're still watching the video. Most of you probably got bored and left the video now, but if you're still here, please hit the subscribe button and please hit the like button because I want to keep making these and I want to keep having fun with it. So yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll uh, catch you in the next one. Bye.